and we're live. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Snag Night Live. I, uh, once again, I want to apologize for my internet. Uh, my video, I'm sure, is choppy, but uh, hopefully my audio is coming through okay. Well, good evening, Stan. Good evening, Austin. Good evening. Good evening. What's up? What's up? And I see downtown Ernie Brown and Sampy and a few few names out there. Yep. Yeah, the they fishing, were in there a little early. Itself. Fish. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and fishing with big mouth. <laughs> Mid south, I mean. The regulars, the, the patrons. That's right. That's, that's right. right. The TSW sports bar. <laughs> it's got like that old style tv where it's you know that wall, that wide in the back yeah the screen you, you got you got stampy and ernie and mid-south <laughs> sitting at the bar and dustin dustin cleaning a a, a, a highball glass got the, the white rag going in it <laughs> yeah me me and stan over there playing the pool <laughs> pool or shuffleboard either one or darts i'm good you know I'm, cool. I'm, 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 hey we, get, we got a few more folks coming in we got uh ron that's for fishing with <laughs> howdy hi y'all congratulations austin hope it's all as well thank you Rhonda. yes ma'am everything's going good he even told me he got a nap today i did get a nap today and and check it out he's got a, a break from parental uh leaves had come back to work tonight for an hour or so yeah. here. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> it, will, it will be reflected in your paycheck. <laughs> right. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Well. You get a paycheck? I see Doug from Rebel River, River Cats. What's up, Doug? Stone I'll, I'll Fly. Right How you doing, man? James from Cool Cats. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope What's up, James? Good. It's a good Thursday. Good Thursday. It's always yep. a good Thursday. That's right. Thursday. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Yep. Baby, baby was born on Monday. Everything went swell. Everything's going good with uh, <laughs> old uh, Mrs. Fever over there. She's doing fantastic. So that is the best news. That's the best yep. news. Mo Mother and son doing doing great and yep. love the name and best the best part of it all is is that uh, River came out looking like the mother because looking like uh, seven twelfths because you know if, if he came out looking like Austin he would have had that Amish beard on already <laughs> so thank yeah, God he has, uh, <laughs> he's got he's got more hair on his head than I do but less hair <laughs> on the face that's for sure. <laughs> He'll get there. He'll get there, you know. That's right. Hey, Butterflies, how you doing? <laughs> James says, uh, right now I am having... Oh, wrong one. Right now I'm having 40 mile an hour wind gusts and, or gusts up in the 60s. Holy moly. Wow. That is That's windy. Crazy. Very you know, windy. It, it's funny, you know, we've heard James talk about the solar flares and we've been... Uh, I've been he's been sharing some of that information with me and stuff and looking it up and it's, you know, for, for anybody that is uh, interested in that kind of stuff, you know, get with James and he'll get you the, the websites and stuff. It, it is, yep. it is really awesome. Yeah. James, James was sending me the links to the videos that he watches. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff is very interesting. James is trying to recruit to the like the <laughs> the, the, the branch Solarians, you know. The, That's right. <laughs> he's old uh, <laughs> James Koresh over there in, in, in Tennessee <laughs> trying to recruit. <laughs> hey, as long as there's a river by it and a pond in the middle, yeah, I'm, I'm, go, I'm down. I'm, Let's go. That's right. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> we can we we as long as I got a place to fish, you know. I'd, and hey, you know, sure, you're the second coming. Whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you know, everybody had their own jobs. Is gonna be a river. Everybody had their jobs there, you know, so we'd be the fishermen of the group, you know. I, yeah, I think that, that sounds good. We'll feed the village. I'm I'm already doing yeah. that, so why not? <laughs> you know. What'd you say, Dustin? I said, can y'all hear me? Yes. What'd you do now? Yep. There's an audio delay now, too, apparently. 
Yeah. Yep. You're like the you're like the old martial martial arts movies. Like <laughs> the thing yeah. I loved about those, it was like, Hello, how are you today? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well that's I hope like you have uh, a good day. <laughs> that's like uh Rocky Four, where <laughs> where where he beats the Russian and then he's telling the announcer, you know, like you guys and us guys, we're all family, we're all good, and then the Russian is like Avru Pista. It's like, did you say everything <laughs> that I said? You know? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Rocky Balboa, look at look at this thing right here. This thing, this thing's shining pretty good. Pretty good. I okay, appreciate how's that? Is that better? I appreciate Doug shining it up for me so he could give it to me, you know. He said he shined right, it up. I can now. Can you see me better? Yes, your picture is great. You're glowing. Awesome. You look now, fantastic. Oh, <laughs> I am hey, now connected a... to my phone. Oh, okay. We got uh dog and I outdoors. What's up? Hey, the Gandhi. How you doing? The Gandhi. What's up, Curtis? Is that belt you stole from John Parker? Oh no, but this belt has been stolen. What? <laughs> Not by me. Not by me, but the old Stan Hog got his little furry paws on it. That, I, mean, I had to it. I had to go I had to go find the uh the old Stan the, the Stan Hog burrow. I was I was surprised you got it back that quick. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, that burrow is it's it's rough. I look like Forrest Gump going into the you know in Vietnam trying to get, get that thing back. <laughs> and if anybody doesn't know Austin's checking about uh, talking about, make sure you check out that uh, short that he dropped last week, beginning of this past week. On the yeah, uh, right he won the Austin congratulations, winning the Hickory heavyweight. That's what we have. That's that. The belt right there, that's what we have here on the James River. Uh, we yep. Great thing. We had a couple new people uh, joining and doing that with us this year. I thought that was pretty cool. It was. It was uh, very cool. I guarantee, I bet you we're going to have a few more people. I bet you it's going to be a full tournament next year uh, trying to get that belt from you. and That'd be awesome. All I'm saying so. is my name's getting stamped in there this year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll be back next year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was. Uh, we were missing you out on the river this year, Dustin. I missed being there. I really did, but it was. It was. I guess that I was still happy just to be a part of it. Yeah, and again, thank you so much for doing that. Absolutely. It, in hindsight, that did work out pretty well. Having uh, Dustin oh, looked, there, yes, it worked out fantastic. You know, of course, you know, he was complaining about his uh, working conditions there on Virginia <laughs> Beach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a little well, great. A... <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Perham, what's up, my friend? What's up, Josh? Hey, Sean, Ed Evans, got... how you doing, brother? Yep, and Jeff Beals, the Skewkel River Brothers. Crappy day, what's up? Oh, sorry there. I didn't know you had one. I, I got to get we got Matt from I Want to Be Outdoors said, oh, thank goodness. You guys are like the Martian to the beach. <laughs> Just kidding. Love them, ladies. <laughs> Motrin. 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 I can't. I, oh, Motrin. I can't read. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> so I said, so during the, te during the tournament, I said ambidextrous, and they made fun of me for that. And you can't even <laughs> pronounce Motrin. <laughs> I couldn't read it. What did I say today, Mrs. Fever? I said, oh, pronunciate instead of enunciate. I mixed pronounce and enunciate. And, I've, and I said, I've been saying that for years. She says, you've been wrong for years. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Rag Outdoors, how you doing? Del Hayslip, welcome in. Since last time I seen that belt, two stands was running away with it. That's right. Well, we got it back. We got it back. Catch fish with us. Welcome in. Catfish, how you doing? Stand three, what's going on? He well, said, aren't you all cute wearing matching shirts? Did y'all call each other before the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, I couldn't out. get the head to match, so I had to put a different hat on so that. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So you got a big enough forehead to put that hat back far enough. It looks the same. 
Yeah. There we there go. Same is. effect, right? Exactly. <laughs> Greg, we got, uh, we got John from Catfish Hunters in here. What's up, John? And Roger from Muskrat Adventures. How you doing, Roger? Quiet man, Curtis. What is going on? Ben while fishing oh, yeah. outdoors. Thanks for joining us. I don't know if you did you say how to uh, Northern View there? I did not see Northern View outdoors. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. And the very lovely Lisa Elliott. Hey, hey, very nice. Welcome very nice. Um, well, thank Well, first off, like, like I, I always like to start the show saying I hope everybody had a wonderful week and look forward, looks forward to a wonderful, even more wonderful weekend. Um, I know this, the winds are going to be high in most places. So uh, if you're going out in the water, just be very careful. Um, you know, we always want to always want to preach the, the safety, safety first. But uh, speaking of fishing, uh, Sean and I went out Wednesday. We didn't go live. Uh, I didn't have my um, hair curlers with me. So the breeze was kicking up a little bit. Uh, we did get some some video, but we just ha we just hung out uh, and fished uh, all day to bring home a skunk. So that was disappointing. But um, I, I did bring home something else. And I'll, I'll show you. Just hold on. Don't. That's your a leg. That's you got a your leg back. Oh, okay. all right. That's that's. <laughs> you see it now? There oh yeah. <laughs> Dang you! You're yeah. Yeah, there's uh there's dust and proven that we do not wear pants when we're live. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All business up top. <laughs> Just like a Zoom meeting. Yeah, that's right. But uh, but no, my my right knee, which is one I, that, that I had uh, surgery on, is now burnt. So that adds to any discomfort. Oh, so I've been dealing with that last couple of days. But yeah, so that just so included in the safety uh, for yourself. Also wear sunscreen. So I'm proof that that what happens when you don't. Yep, yeah, I'm I'm horrible about that. As you can oh, tell, my face is not sunburned because I wore my hoodie all day. Like I put my hood up on my sweater, even though it was a little warmer outside. I didn't want my head to get sunburned, but I didn't think about my legs. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Nah. Fever always gets frustrated because I come home looking like a raccoon. <laughs> Got the sunglasses. It's all white here. <laughs> and all this is just tomato. Well, the last time I went out, I wore my hat. And you could tell where I wore my hat because you know on the hat you're wearing a stand has the little, with a little snap has that little half moon in the back. <laughs> yep. I had a half moon sunburn in the back of my head. Nice, nice. That's how you do it. Lisa Elliott said, "Dang, talk about glow in the dark." <laughs> oh, stand uh, three's got a little tip right there. Check your trolling motor shear pins and make sure you have a spare with you. <laughs> I guess something happened. Uh oh. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> oh, he said checked mine and it was broke. Wow. Yeah. Gregory Lemon, welcome in. How you doing, buddy? Thank you for coming in. We really appreciate it. What's up? Matt from Want to Be Outdoors said holy sunburn, then pure white blindness above that. Yep. <laughs> I that's try to get my son, my my legs some sun, and that's what happens. Looks like an Irish lobster. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did. Uh, Curtis Cunningham has said, and don't drop the prop nut in the water either. Yeah, that could be yeah. a bad, or a bad day. Pretty bad. Some great advice out there from everyone. Absolutely. Hmm. Jeff Deal said, I just bought a new sunblock can. I used a marker to tag 2024 on it, so I know it's the new one. Well, just throw the other ones away, Jeff. Yeah, what are you, <laughs> <laughs> what are you labeling your sunblock for? <laughs> this one's from 1973. <laughs> yeah. He's got cans of sunblock that ought to be on the lattice at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and Here's the Hawaiian Tropic one. This was yeah. my favorite, 1979. 
He's got a can of like Pete's family sunblock. Smells <laughs> <laughs> like pineapples. <laughs> <laughs> it's pina colada sunblock. Uh, it probably smells like PCBs and, and lead <laughs> lead paint. <laughs> Well, remember, <sighs> well, I was just gonna say, remember back in the day, like the uh Hawaiian Tropic and all that, it had an SPF of one, <laughs> two. <laughs> now you can get up to a hundred, not that anything yeah. over 50 works. Yeah, it's like uh putting Duke's mayonnaise on you. <laughs> yeah. Sandri said it's springtime and more people hitting the water, something that Something that people overlook. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Why are you buying sunblock if you already had some? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Gregory says, my dad dropped a short video on Lemon Fab. Oh. Is that That's his other uh, channel? I think, doesn't Dave have, uh, Dave has a couple of channels, right? He does. The, the other one's his um, car channel. Yep. And so I said, was younger, I picked up the wrong one. It was accelerant. <laughs> accelerator and not sunblock. Went to drag races and paid dearly for it. Oops. That's right. Do they yeah. even sell? I don't even know if they sell that stuff anymore. Like, uh, it used to, remember it used to be not sunscreen. It was that sun tan lotion, like you oh, specifically yeah, just specifically put it on so that the sun's rays magnified onto your skin. I don't know if they even sell that anymore or not. They do. They do. In the tanning salons. <laughs> the little that's right. Oh yeah, yeah. The little goggles on, lay in the tanning bed. I still come out burnt. That's one thing I've never done. I've never been in a tanning bed. I did it when I was younger. I haven't done it ever since. It's it's really quite relaxing. Like I I didn't do it for tan or whatever because I was outside all the time. I was already always tan, but you you do it and it's like uh, the you get the hum and you're just in there and it's just that glow and you don't hear any other noise and it it's just, oh yeah, uh, it's really pretty uh, pretty relaxing. Yeah, that feeling like you're like you're baking, like in a hot call. <laughs> yeah, that, and you feel like taking a nap. That's what my wife says. She's that she likes that baking feeling. <laughs> when she's in the oven. That's right. You feel all warm and toasty. No, I didn't I didn't need to go to uh tanning salons when I was younger. My parents basically I was like little Joe Dirt out there where they just kind of like forgot about <laughs> me out there in the yard. So, you know. I got plenty of sun. <laughs> JG Hills out there. What's up, JG? What's up, JG? How you hey, doing, JG? Gregory Lemon said him uh, said I'm going crappy fishing tomorrow. Very nice. Very nice. Luck, Gregory. Bring some sunblock. Stan three says, Well, this took a turn. <laughs> turn for the worst. Talking about <laughs> panning bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what happens, Stan Three, when you don't have a topic to talk about. You end up like the bait shop, just talking about all sorts of stuff. Off the wall stuff. Uh, Gregory, I did see that picture of you and your dad with the crappies, the crappie slide. That was awesome. So, Stan, how was your week? My week was uh, it was a week. <laughs> Actually, I was I'm still recovering from the past. I mean, the past month uh, has just been a, a whirlwind. It's been uh, host. Live, 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 host live, host live, couple days off, live, host live, 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 couple days off. Uh, you know, we did the uh, uh, the two King of the Tennessees, the the big raffle giveaway there, the benefit raffle. Uh, not to mention, you know, the stand days and the Fridays, uh, Friday night shows. And then the uh, several, you know, occasional visits here on, uh, on, on, on. Uh, on snagging night live and then uh the bank verse boat tournament and then we had easter and then the uh catfish uno tournament last week so this is kind of uh decompression week i guess and uh get to just kind of hang out and watch the tournament this uh, this saturday 
There you go. And uh, go back to it from there. And then we'll have stand day on Sunday, of course, again. But, uh, yeah, so it's just been kind of getting recouped from all that and trying to get things caught up and uh, doing that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, Stan 3 says, I'm not going to talk about it, but y'all can talk about the monster fish that he caught the other day. I'm not going to talk about it either. He caught a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Stan hey, three caught a hog. Yeah, in the in the seventies, a little over seventy. That was awesome. monster fish. I was hoping we'd pull one out on uh, on Wednesday, but no luck. Did y'all uh, y'all go up in the city on Wednesday? We did. Did you get any hickory shed? We did not. Really? We we were. Um, I had the. I bought some spoons, and. Um, I was fishing for those, and I I didn't even get I don't think I got a bite. Um, then we then we went down and uh, Sean threw the cast net, pulled in a nice uh, um, striper, but uh, I think he he may have gotten one gizzard shad. Then we dropped the gill net and pulled in five more gizzard. We didn't see a hickory shad all day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That. You know, they're so the, the hickory shad and, and that that spring run is so controlled by uh, water temperature and the water, the current and how much water is coming through and yep. uh, the clarity too. clarity the, the, the you know, think about it. Solar eclipse would so that's affecting the, the sunshine, the sunlight, the amount of uh, uh, daylight and then uh, all things, you know, with, with like that. So they've been kind of just. Uh, screwed up and you know you get that that big big rush of water like what we had and it'll it'll knock them down for sure but i believe i heard they're back up and water's getting to be back to about what it should be the white perch had just made it up and then that kind of got the bamboozle with that so yeah we caught i caught one perch on a sabiki rig we caught a couple on the cast net and then um that was it the water was fine. The water clarity was was good. It was back to normal. Um, the current was pretty strong, but uh, um, but the water temperature was still 58 degrees when we got out there. It was it was up to 60 on surface temp when we left um, Wednesday afternoon. But so it should be in the it should be in the 60s this week this week and the next week. Very nice, very nice. Well, that's that's cool that you caught one on the Sabiki rig. Yeah, it was just the one on the very bottom too, so yeah. probably about twenty feet of water. Okay, well, that's cool. That means that they're uh, they're coming up, you know, in more numbers. So it's moving right along. Yeah, we were hoping. I was hoping to to, to get to put in a couple of uh, hickory shed. Um, because I know with the, the hickory shad and the perch coming up, there's those are going to be the the main source of food at this point, just because they're they're new to the area, they're new on the buffet. Yep. So I think we got a couple of hits on the on the gizzard shad, but nothing nothing hooked up. Yeah, I don't you know, I don't know. During the uh the hickory heavyweight, the water was so horrible for uh yep. hickory shad fishing that uh we threw the cast net tyler and i were out there we threw the cast net and i got a few uh gizzard shad in it and that's that's what all them all those fish we caught that day came on gizzard shad because that's uh he had some frozen hickory shad that were about a year old and the hickory <laughs> shad hickory shad don't freeze very well to begin with and no they get they're so mushy they're they're just they're not a it's not a firm fillet you know so yeah they you did, can get we, we tried it but I don't I don't think we got a single bite on on it everything came on the uh, fresh gizzard shed which you would expect so yeah. right I'm I'm a believer that gizzard shad you can use gizzard shad year round and will something like white perch and stuff perform better uh, this time of year will it perform better than gizzard shad maybe but i think you're always going to be able to you know and i'm talking about in general you're going to have those days where that one day everything they want is going to be white perch 
But if you're if you consistently have gizzard shot, I think the most important thing is that it's fresh bait, whatever it is. That's the biggest uh okay. the biggest thing of it. But uh white perch seem to if you're in an area that has white perch, I think that seems to be that and bluegill, I think, seem to be two of the better freezing baits. Yeah, bluegill freeze is excellent. Yeah. Uh, Stone Cloud wants to know, Austin, is the baby's name Eclipse? No, no. <laughs> we thought it's, about it, though. He was he was born right there, Um, I don't know, uh, about half an hour right after, like, where it peaked. So he, he was born during it, but, it, like, about a half an hour after it uh, peaked totality here in Virginia, which was, like, 310. So he, he was born at, like, 340, 342 is what it was. Gotcha. Um, yeah. but, but that's one of the things we can talk about the hickory heavyweight uh you know the last year was uh horrible conditions it was won by the one big fish 43 pounder uh by uh doug rebel or 46 46 pounder doug and uh mike rebel river cats and then uh this year you had uh uh tyler out fishing with uh with Austin, they did a great job. But I think what you saw was adverse conditions, and I think it was a uh, uh, what size, what kind of bait were you using? Uh, you just you just said what what types you were trying to use stuff, and you got it on Gizzard Chat. I mean, were you using like uh, huge pieces of bait because it's that one big fish, or no? I was I, I didn't didn't uh, I wasn't using you know, big donkey baits, like whole gizzard shad or anything. I was just using, actually, if anything, I was using smaller than I normally do ever so slightly because we were trying to conserve bait. And that, yeah. we were, you know, it wasn't because I thought the fish would like that more. It was because we were trying to conserve bait. You know, <laughs> I, only, I only had like four gizzard shad, you know, so. But I think that that worked out in your favor. I think because, so. Uh, that is, you know, that if I've in the few years that we've been doing these tournaments and these things, and you get a you get a numbers tournament, and you're going to throw all kinds of different size baits out there, and you'll, you know, in a numbers tournament, you almost always see people catching a bunch of fish because everybody's using smaller size baits, and yeah. uh, even a negative, even a fish that's kind of in a negative mood that little snack goes by him and he eats it. You know, it's kind of yep. like a Reese's, a Reese's cup going by us. You know, we may not be hungry enough to eat a whole pizza, but who's going to pass up a Reese's cup or a couple chip? You know, and I think it's along those lines. And yep. uh, that day with the water temperatures, the water conditions, everything, it just shouted, okay, downsize your baits. But we were fishing a big fish tournament. So uh, all of our baits, we were using, you know, chunks of the shad head you saw the you saw the baits that we were using oh we were yeah cutting the, the big normal not, a normal and bigger baits like we had some bigger baits out there and yeah we had, I would have been doing that too as far as uh maybe not on every rod but if we had a if we had plenty of bait i probably would have put at least a couple like like three quarters of the gizzard shad out there mm -hmm. you know like couple donkey baits but but we didn't i had we had four gizzard shed and i really did not want to have to tap into that frozen hickory shed so i was, <laughs> so I, I was we were cutting that gizzard shed up you know pretty conservatively but it ended up paying off you know i mean anybody I, could have caught you know the biggest fish was almost 19 pounds <laughs> that's really that's that's not that big of a fish you know for for the james river so anybody could have caught it it just so happened, you know. Wasn't that Tyler's fish? He eight, eight, almost nineteen pounds. We're not going. We're not going to talk about that because I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel bad about that anymore because. <laughs> I, I Austin, I would just like to fine. point out that actually, Justin you know what, you know what, you know what, y'all, we can talk about it all you want to. I'm just going to let you know I don't feel bad about it anymore because <laughs> when we got back, when we got back to the ramp, he broke one of my rods, and I and I said that eighteen pounder that I caught is mine. Oh, yeah, oh wow. wow. You know, so nothing against I'm, Tyler, but you know, tit for tat, you know, okay. It, everything everything's fair. 
That was my fish. <laughs> Maybe no, that's why he I'm... broke your rod. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Unless he's got a crystal ball somewhere. He had no idea that was coming. <laughs> oh, he broke your rod after rent when he first, before you started. Uh, oh, before no. he went. Okay. No, 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 no. No. He, oh, you're, you're saying that he broke the rod. Yes, yes. I see. What it, no, when we were taking okay. out, he, he, he accidentally broke a rod. So. And I said, that 18-pounder I caught, <laughs> I don't feel bad about it anymore. <laughs> uh, for those that don't know what we're talking about, uh, Tyler uh, does a lot of bank fishing, and he has a kayak. So he was going to do it in the kayak. But with the weather conditions, the river conditions, unless you've uh, been out there and done that kind of thing, he made the best decision. And Austin was gracious enough to let him fish the boat. So they were still two separate teams. They had all the rods out, fish one, went to whoever. Then the next bite was the next person's and so on and so on. Yep. But I'd like to point out that it was Dustin that, that called you out on that. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't Tyler. It was. It was. <laughs> Tyler was going to let it go. You know, he he, wasn't he, was thinking. Thinking. he said he was thinking. He just wasn't going to say anything. That's fine. Yeah. Well, then it, I guess, you know, <laughs> hey, look, when a fish hits the rod and it runs 100 <laughs> miles an hour perpendicular with the river and you got two rods that are getting tangled up, you got to be quick about it. Absolutely. Although I when uh, when uh, Dustin did bring it up, I think everybody else kind of just jumped right on with it and ran. Oh, of with course it, they you know, did. And, as and, usual, you know, as per usual. But you know, and Dustin and my wife, they they work together. You know, like they they have a part time <laughs> job where they figure out ways to to get at me. You know, so you know, <laughs> once Dustin said something, then Mrs. Fever, you know, she. She clocked in and went to work too. So. <laughs> Absolutely, we're a great team. We work There's well. Uh, Palmetto yeah, cats out in the audience. Good. What's up, Palmetto? What's up, Kevin? Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Backlash fisherman's in the house. There's a lot of people that jumped in. Apparently, the bait shop stopped talking. Um, <laughs> there were a couple yeah. questions that I think we skipped over too. Uh, yeah, one person was saying, "Oh, go ahead." Well, Stan already answered it, but Matt from Wannabe Outdoors says, does the hickory shad run and, and white perch run conflict with one another if the situations don't permit one or the other to run? And I, and I think I understand what you're asking. But the hickory shad, like Stan through said, the hickory shad usually come up first, and then the white perch are close behind them. But the white perch stay up river for longer than the hickory shad do so we have a much larger window to get on the hickory shad than we do the white the no we have a much larger window to get on the white perch than we do the hickory shad that's why during this time you'll hear us talk about the hickory 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 because we have, we have a very short window <laughs> where we can you know get on those but they don't conflict say, they don't yeah. conflict with one another at all i will say too um the blueback herring are up uh, I did get two of those on the rod, and a friend of ours on another boat caught one of those as well. So, cool. I'm not I sure. Do those run? Those do those run too? Or are those always around? Or what's no, that? They run. The they run. Blue the they what? Run. I didn't hear the you yet. The, the blueback herring. Oh yeah, the herring or the. With the uh, with the hickory shad, you got hickory shad, American shad, blueback herring, and alive. They kind of all kind of run together. Yep. Uh, your hickory shad, I think, primarily hit here first, and your American shad. You know, they uh, that's why we can't keep American shad. There's not quite as many of those. So yep. That's why you will catch more uh, hickory shad than than the other ones, but. But yeah, they they're all a little they're, they're all a little bit different with what water temperature and that type of stuff they like. Yeah, it's but only they're all like relatively. A, yeah, it's only like a degree or two difference though. So it it could be yep. you got hickories on Wednesday and by Friday you got you know white perch. Or, you know, <laughs> so. Kevin That's says right. the nation better watch out. These guys even coordinate outfits. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> JD and haircuts. JG made the we, comment earlier up in chat saying that this looks like a, a pro staff a pro staff meeting. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there it is. You can't be in possession right. of him here on the James. Yeah, you'll get in big trouble. 
Yeah, it's Big something trip. like a thousand dollars a fish for. Uh, yeah. Huge. Yeah, nice. Same thing as striper. Uh, stripers come up during all this too, so yeah. your. I always say it wrong, but it's your andronomous andronomous fish, mm-hmm. meaning they travel from salt water into fresh water to, uh, to spawn. And I'll say every time I'm out there looking for white perch, I'll, I'll it, it never fails. I'll get two or three or sometimes four or five blueback herring on that rod, and that thing's bent over in the water. Those things fight like crazy. Yeah, they're fun. They're fun to catch. Yeah, they are so mm-hmm. fast. Matt's asking why. I, I think he's asking why can't we possess them because because there's not as much of them. They're just they're protected. Every every area every region's a little bit different, but in this in the Chesapeake Bay watershed coming up to James, you know that you know well actually well stripers have been protected for a long time now in the chesapeake bay because the chesapeake bay is a nationally known striper destination so they've uh they're they've had a they've had a conservation program for quite some time and the blue back hair in the american shed and uh yeah and the alwife ly or we call them they've been protected for some time too yeah, and I, I like what they do with the striper. Striper is a slot limit fish, so you uh, you gotta you can only keep them in a certain range, and I think that's a great idea. puts yeah. the, the puts the big breeders back in the water, so they're getting more eggs, getting the better genetics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, allows you to keep fish and uh, the right size fish, and then keeps the small ones in there to the to they reach breeding size and et cetera, et cetera. But I think that's a you know that 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 should be if you're going to harvest fish, selective harvest. I think that's the way to go with everything. Yeah. Ed Evans is saying here in Pennsylvania, we are not allowed to keep herring, but we can keep three American shad per day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every region is a little bit different because the the numbers that come up in the in the Delaware, I can specifically speak for the Delaware River. Uh, and it may be, you know, I'm sure it's changed some by now because it's been a while, but we used to be right by the Delaware. And there was, by the time the shad run was done, uh, like they'd be, they'd be uh, just all these dead fish all over the place. And it was just a huge American shad. And there was just literally millions of sh- American shad coming up the river. Wow. That's pretty cool. Dan Three saying they just took the striper trophy season away like two years ago. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Used to be able to keep one trophy. And then Rod is saying that Maryland canceled their trophy striper season this year and are considering more rules for harvesting them. You know, and the big issue is, as with most fisheries, uh, (laughs) excuse me, commercial fishing, uh, over harvesting by commercial fishing, looser rules for commercial fishing. And, uh, you know, and then there's there's other things with that as well. But uh, that I think that that hurts it a lot because they're not held to the same rules that, you know, we are as recreational. So one, you know, one commercial fishing boat is literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recreational anglers as far as catch and everything. So, yeah. but, But, you know, they yeah. do that with the – they restrict a lot of it right now this time of year because they haven't made it yet, so they're coming up. So that's why we can still – we right now we still – I think it's May before we can keep striper in the spring. But by then they've already made it, so the eggs are in the water. They've already got that done. Then they, they let you keep it, so. Right. Ron is saying, and guess what? They are blaming. Wait for it. Blue cat yeah. population. <laughs> yeah. Same yeah. thing they're blaming on the crabs out in the bay. Yep. That's true. I mean, it couldn't have anything to do with all the people that are catching the crabs, right? No, 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 no. Like Stan 3 said, it's it's uh it's also not the people following the rules that are the problem. Correct. Yeah. And the <laughs> fact that you can keep uh uh female crabs, not just the blue crab, I mean not just the male crabs, so that's uh that's part of it too. And you know, uh just like with catfish, 
the crabs only make the once. So when you see a triangle like that on a blue crab, that's an immature female crab. It hasn't made it yet. When you see them with like a, a swollen triangle, an obligate oblong triangle, that means that's a uh, that's a mature female that's already laid eggs. Mm -hmm. so, that's, that's interesting information. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, they're not as pro they're you know they're not this uh, you know like bluegill and and panfish and things like that. They're pro prolific about breeders. Same crabs and that are just not so. That's part of the issue there also. Um, Curtis, Curtis Cunningham said, I was at a fishery this weekend and the conservation officer was encouraging people to eat trophy blues. Yeah. It's not yeah, that's pretty messed up. Well, you know, they, they'll uh, promote whatever they want to. You know, it, whether it makes sense or, or not. That's like, um, oh, we could get into it. We could go so deep into this, but the. Uh, <laughs> you only got 27 or 17 minutes left, Austin. The, the governor of Virginia, you know, giving grants to family owned commercial fishermen to go out there and uh, so we can put um, blue cats on people's tables, you know. Why not? Why not just. I don't know. Why not make a fishing license cheaper? Or why not just, I don't know, do so. You could promote it so many different ways. Or how about take that money and, and fix all the dang roads that are in Virginia? Or so, <laughs> you know, you, come well, on, you know, you, you know, that's just, you think, you honestly think the governor of Virginia gives a darn about the blue cat population? No, he does not. He's being pressured by certain lobbyists from, from big, Seafood companies here in Virginia and Maryland at, at the country club, they're playing at nine holes and shaking hands. And so he's getting, that's, that's all it is. You know, they don't care. They don't care. That's right. I always tell people the reason they're complaining about the, the crab population, well, more so the blue cat population is because it's, it's what they believe consider taking money out of people's pockets, right? Because money is involved. But yep. One of the big issues with it also is a few years back, several years back, they put in uh, regulations at processing centers so they don't allow. Uh, it's more regulations, not only uh, uh, it's USDA and FDA, that if you're going to process blue catfish for some reason, and it was because of the big the uh, channel cats that are farm raised. It was because of the, the channel cat farmers didn't want all the uh, wild because then it was taken away from their oh, yeah. uh, their prices in there. So they wanted it. So they made it their lobby pushed for the extra regulations in the pro So none of the processing centers wanted to do it because you only get about a 30 percent. Yeah, it's like 20. It's like 27 percent of a catfish is actually is actually like a, a eatable filet. Right, all the rest of it is is waste, and there and it's always talk about how we, maybe we can turn it into dog food. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do that. You know, but the fact is, unless people are paying out the yin yang for blue catfish fillets, then it's not going to be profitable for commercial fishermen to catch them, and then they got to pay their processors, or if they do their own processing, it's just not going to be you know. Yeah, it's not profitable. There. You get, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. People, people, people can catch catfish their, themselves for pennies on the dollar. You know, come on. But well, anyway, <laughs> apparently you know, Austin and I could go all night with this. <laughs> it's such um, a it's such a load of doo doo. Well, thank you, Chad. Appreciate your permission to go live. You're 46 minutes late, but we'll uh, take that into consideration next time. Thank you so much, Chad. Thank you. Uh, Mark from Catfish and Crop is in the house. How are you doing, Mark? What's up, Mark? 45 amazing, awesome people out there watching. Tom, Ooh, LG. Yes. Uh, had, had to host, I mean, got to host uh, D. I uh, had to host Chad um, <laughs> this week. Um, so that was very gracious of you. Uh, you. Tom didn't like my comment that I left uh, after Chad showed his new PB bass 
I said, nice fish. Now put it on a hook and go catch a monster. Yeah, Tom, did, Tom did very well. <laughs> well, the, the good thing with that is, though, at least if it was going to be used like that, and, you know, in Virginia, you got to use it whole. So it, if if it didn't catch a monster, it could have been released back unharmed, except for, you know, the piercing, the piercing that it would have had other than that, a free piercing. And, you know, it could have, uh, you were letting it swim around for a little bit and you would have put it back if it didn't catch a monster. So, you know, um, I believe uh, one interesting thing, and I plan on doing some of this this year, but on the Upper James, right? And we always talk about trying to use the, the natural bait that's in the body of water that you're fishing, right? So in the on the Upper James, there's a lot of smallmouth bass. There's a very good population of smallmouth bass. And uh, one thing I've never really done up there, like I've always used bluegill or crappie or whatever, you know, but one thing I've never really done up there is catch a bunch of smallmouth bass and use them for bait for the flatheads, but it makes perfect sense to do so. And you can keep up to five in aggregate, which just means in total. And there's no, uh, there's no size limit except for, um, I think, uh, one trophy, you know, but if, as long as you don't go over that trophy size, then it's just five in total. Yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm going to try that a couple of times with the population being so good up there. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. I think I think the flatheads up there are eating quite a bit of smallmouth bass. <laughs> we got Tom was saying Chad drove D and Alyssa there. Oh, there you go. There you go. That makes that makes sense. You know, and Chad is Chad is just such a horrible, horrible food review person. I mean, he's he's sitting there with that beautiful, amazing, luscious Boston cream donut that Michelle slaved over. And all he he can't give it more than like you know thirty seconds of a good critique. Like, look at this amazing! Look at the chocolate, so smooth from edge to edge. And look at this cream filling. This is the most luscious cream filling that I've you know nothing, none of that, nothing, nothing. <laughs> There's one thing I got to correct. It was a cupcake, not a donut. What did I say, donut? You did. It, it, that <laughs> cupcake was so good it should have been a donut. You know what I'm saying? That's. Uh... <laughs> Oh, look, Bubbles is in here. What's up, Brian? And uh, since we are talking about Chad and Brian, and I saw Palmetto out there, we do have the Fishathon uh, to raise money. You see us all with our our FOA, our red, white, and blue veteran owned business there. Uh, you have the Fishathon this weekend, this Saturday. That is the Live Fishing Tournament League tournament that's happening this Saturday. <laughs> Uh, all money raised. There's going to be a link out there, a PayPal link. It will go to the veterans, a veterans charity. Uh, so big shout out for that. And it is going to be tournament number two in the live fishing tournament league. Ooh, look at them <laughs> go. You can uh, check that out on Palmetto Cats, Brian B. And of course, it is Chad's tournament. So uh, fields to water. I almost said fishing with the Chad channel. But uh, fields to water. So there you go. That's so two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, Brian. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, speaking of that, uh, it, uh, Brian is saying that in his comment, uh, memberships are out, are available for um, Team Snag and Whiskers. We really appreciate it. It helps us get um, you know gas for the boats, any repairs we may have to get done, like I did the trim motor on my boat. Um, Helps us get all any of the gear we might need to go out and, and make our make our lives better and make our videos better. So thank you for all of our our current Whisker Warriors. Um, but the, like I said, if you would if you if you would like to become a Whisker Warrior, the link is out in the description. It's the very first one. I think it's two ninety nine a month. So I didn't want to I didn't want to make it too outrageous, but uh, we really appreciate all of our Whisker Warriors and current and future. So thank you very much, and also. Um, Again, I'd be amiss if I didn't do an FOA commercial. So please go check out FOACustomsandgear.com. They've got all your fishing needs from, from bait fish to catfish. Um, they've got, if you need to get mugs, uh, coffee cups, uh, you know, anything, towel, bait towels, you can, or excuse me, bait rags. You can get those there, FOACustomsandgear.com. You can use code TSW10. You can use code, where's my, 
favorite 10, you can go as code two stands 10 and get yourself 10% off your order. So go check them out. And then again, uh, ancient mariner fishing.net. Uh, they have great gear. Their rods are fantastic. Sean and I have been using them for years. Uh, their reel, reels are awesome. Uh, I won't fish with anything other than an ancient mariner reel. Um, and they also have a lifetime warranty on them. So go check out uh, ancientmarinerfishing.net. Uh, you can also go to River Cats Tackle. They have uh, some ancient mariner gear over there as well. So they're partnered with them. So go check them out. And you can probably get some codes from Danny Stone and and some of the anglers over there at River Cats Tackle. But uh, I will I will sing the praises of Ancient Mariner um, as long as I'm fishing on the water. So awesome. my good job, Dustin. Good job. I can't wait to try out that new Ancient Mariner Albatross reel. Going to be amazing. Yep, I'm going to get in one of those here shortly. I need an extra reel for my uh, my sixth FOA rod that I have ordered. So or I had I had uh, brought back for, from uh, CatCon for me. So I realized that I can't. I was gonna put the the um, the low profile ancient mariner reel on there, but I can't separate Amy Jane. So Amy Jane was was donated to our channel uh, from a really good friend of ours, and that's a rod and reel combo. So I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to use Amy Jane out on the water, um, the seven foot um, Leviathan rod with the ocean tycoon ancient mariner ancient mariner ocean tycoon low profile reel. Um, I will have I do have a FOA power line on it, forty pound power line. So um, but anyway, I will try. I'm gonna try to get one of those albatross reels here sh real soon. Heck yeah! Did hey, Tom? Did Chad? Did Chad put you up to that? I think <laughs> Chad said something. He felt a little left out, and that's not using the FTW ten. I see oh, that. Yeah. I heard it. <laughs> Oh, Danny Stone said you can use DSO 10 for River Cats Tackle. Get yourself 10% off your Ancient Mariner gear. They're, they're already uh, reasonably priced. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the reels are $99.99. Uh, free shipping, lifetime warranty. You cannot beat a lifetime warranty on a fishing reel. And the free shipping, that adds mm -hmm. up. I used uh, I used DSO 10 just the other day. I bought a couple things that Freddie was out of. Wanted to support because I like supporting John, too. You know, I think he's... Y'all got awesome people over there and love you, Danny. So use that TSO 10 just the other day. Absolutely. Awesome. I've done some stuff over there with them on some live shows and things and talk with John and Lance and Danny and Creole and all them. So great team, great crew. Got a question now, wants to know what's the smallest bait that you use for catching monster catfish? It can it can be as small as a you know a, a small chunk of I mean we I've caught in a fifty pounder off of a a small body section of gizzard shed so yep you That's know really it's a it's a relative term when <laughs> across yeah, exactly. the country because you know big small uh, typically if you're going for monster. It, it if you're targeting monster fishing again it depends on the conditions too you know if you're going if it's good conditions and the fish are feeding big baits big baits if it's uh you know you got cold front in and the water's a little chilly and things have dropped then you downsize and you match the fish that are in your water so if it's uh big fish in your waters are 10 pounds use the baits match that to what you're what you're going after and i can i can guarantee you that um even if you have big baits down and you got, you don't have like, you don't have, you know, 20, 30, 40 pound fish. Stan and I have proven that some fish will bite a bait and try to eat it. That's bigger than it can. Like we pulled a flathead. We were free lining bluegill and we pulled a flathead out of, out um, on, on a free line bluegill that the, the flathead or the bluegill laid sideways was bigger than the flathead's mouth. He couldn't get it all the way in. But we and we couldn't get it out because of the spikes and the hook. I think was in the gill too. But yeah, so they're they're very aggressive when they're hungry. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's a bait that's really too big. You know, to be honest with you, Roger, Roger was out with um, is it Skip, right? I think he was out with Skip uh, last week, and they. 
they post a video and they caught a flathead and it was I think I think it's skip. It was his PB flathead. And that thing yeah. had that thing had a massive I think it was a carp or a drum. Yeah. I mean massive, like a huge drum. That, that that thing had a tail, the tail sticking out of its mouth, like you know. You gotta watch the video, but I think it's on uh is it clear view? Yep, clear view outdoors. Clear view outdoors. I, yeah, that that was incredible. The the tail sticking out of that flathead's mouth was just massive. And then and then the flathead still wanted to eat. It still bit the bait, you know. So <laughs> he wasn't done yeah. yet. Yeah, and, and you know, you gotta look at what baits in the in the water. If there's no if there is no really big uh you know like you were saying like carp or we got the you know we can use bigger baits here because we got the giant shad and etc so they're used to eating big baits there's no sous chef out there chopping up the gizzard shad for them into bite-sized chunks and stuff. <laughs> so if the predominant food source out there is big they'll eat bigger baits if if it's uh shiners or little you know, smaller sunfish and bluegills, if that's the primary food source, then they're going to be more apt to eat in smaller baits. Yep. There you go. There you go. Tom saying he caught his PB flathead. It was 35 pounds on a two-inch minnow. And like uh, Charles is saying, elephants do eat peanuts. Oh, uh, Spencer from River Certified, he says that quite often. So. <laughs> I think uh, I think the only thing like if you put a big big bait, you're I mean, you are gonna limit this like the size of fish that can take that bait, but um, but if you use small baits, you can get a you can get a monster. I mean, I just, there's been people that catch monster blues on chicken, just crazy. Yep. I think it's just more fun to use big baits. <laughs> <laughs> And also, you know, I mean, I know, I know you'll get a, like you just said, that flathead tried to eat a bluegill that he couldn't, that he really had no business eating. But for the most part, you use big enough baits, you eliminate smaller fish. You know? <laughs> for the most part, you know, anything can happen. But, you know, we've all caught catfish that, you know, and then the, the bait is hanging out of its mouth, still on the hook. And the bait is the same size as the head of the catfish. And it, it doesn't make any sense, but. For the most part, you put you put a uh, put like a whole sixteen inch gizzard shad on there. <laughs> you're not you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna be catching two pound. <laughs> yeah. on it, so right, and if you listen to Epic and talking with him a lot, that's one of the reasons that he does that because he's primarily targeting the absolute biggest catfish that are out there. Uh, you know, he if. A 50 pounder to him is like, uh, you know, what a 20 pounder would be like to most of us. So he's trying to use baits that are big enough to eliminate as many distractions. My good friend out there likes to call those things distractions uh, as possible and keep the baits in the water the longest for the actual fish that he's after. So uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things that you'll get a feel for after a while. Yep. Right, Rogers out here saying, I like big baits and I cannot lie. No. <laughs> Louis Sorry, I got carried away there. I got carried. Flashback, flashback to the 80s. I was going to say, we're still live, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all right. We dance on my show. <laughs> I know. I dance too. Rogers <laughs> said, Although Skip caught a 65 pound blue on a quarter size chunk of shad. Exactly. Yeah, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I don't think your I don't think your bait can be too small for any size fish, but you can eliminate smaller fish with the huge baits. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, it is ten oh one, my friends. Um, I need to get some sleep. I know Stan wants to go lay down and relax and take it, take kind of kick his feet up and relax from uh, all this. And since <laughs> Rogers out there, I I have a better cheddar waiting for me Ooh. that I never got to eat earlier. So right after the show, Roger, I got a better cheddar calling my name. Very nice. So 
all about the three Asians location, presentation, and adaptation. That's right, Stan Three. That's there his uh he, he's working on a uh he's working on becoming a presenter for CatCon semi uh, uh doing the seminar. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you, you're right, Gregory. You can catch small fish on big baits, but you limit the size of that small fish by the with the bigger the baits you have. Yep, the size of the hook has a lot to do with it too, but or help can help with that. You know, if yeah. you're using a big bait, use a big hook. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's 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 why you should change your hooks anyway. <laughs> if you're going to downsize your bait, you should downsize your hook. You know, the the hook size is about the size of your bait you're using. Yeah, that's right. It has nothing to do with the fish. Well, Other in than reason, the, in reason. the only, the only, ex, or not the only, except there's always exceptions. But you know, you could do like a double hook rig, and that you know, but then you're essentially doubling the size of you know, you're doubling the potential of the fish getting hooked or whatever you know. So it's you're compensating for that. But like you could right. do a double hook rig with two eight odds. Instead of doing one twelve lot, you know, if if that's what you wanted to do, and and you know that would still be, I guess, acceptable, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but to each his own. Absolutely. Well, um, thank you, gentlemen, for coming up tonight. We really appreciate it, as always. Uh, congratulations once again, Austin, on the uh, the the belt and the the little angler you got thank you the thank you angler. um thank you very much have, you know awesome for the next 18 years i'll have a little river next to him everywhere he goes <laughs> <laughs> yep and then and then as, as little river gets older and he has to start filling out applications and this stuff it's gonna when he last name first first name last it'll be short river <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right but but anyway, congratulations on that. Um, thank, thank you guys you. again. Thank you guys again for coming up. We really appreciate it. Thank you for everybody in chat that has come up, come in here and chatted with us this evening. We look forward to seeing uh, all of you back next week. Hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. Uh, enjoy the um, fishathon. On um, no, don't do that when I put say fishathon, Stan. Oh, sorry, wrong one, wrong one. There we go. Fishathon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> go catch the fish on uh fields to waters channel it is like i said it, or like stan said earlier it is a um charity tournament so the money will go to a a, a charity of the winner's choice i believe veterans awesome. a veterans charity veterans yep. charity the winner's choice there we go so thank you all for coming in we really appreciate it we will hope to catch you all next week y'all have a great weekend deuces <laughs>